This is Red Hook Winery. I am so excited to join my friends that are inside. Abe Schoner just arrived from California. Abe is the quintessential flying winemaker. He makes wine in California, France, and Red Hook, Brooklyn. So this is a skin fermentation of Chardonnay. So right now the juice is all underneath this, right? Yeah, and we, what we were just about to do is we were about to punch it down with our hands to push. Are you kidding me? No, to push the skins that Christopher was just talking about, to push them back in, of course, yeah, please. Yeah, that's why it's important to wear short sleeves to the wine. <laughs> cool, and yeah. it's, is it good for your skin? It's also really good for the soul, especially when done four times a day. The soul? Yeah, the soul. Nice, yeah. my soul could use a little. <laughs> Punch down. Look! Look at this. This is this is um, before we punch it down. Look what happens as soon as you go down. Yeah. You start turning a fruit that is much more bright yellow mm -hmm. instead of kind of ochre and gold. Right. And okay. so that's one of the reasons the punch down is important. I think there are two things we're trying to accomplish here. Whatever flavor lives in the skins, we don't want the skins floating up off the wine because then the flavor won't go into the wine. So we're punching it down to make sure that the flavor goes out of the skins in the middle line. But the second thing that we're trying to accomplish is to take the fruit that has been sitting on top and it turns over it from exposure to oxygen, push it back down into the wine, and it gets revived. The amazing thing is it spends a little while in the wine and then it turns back yellow again. Now, do you always do this with your hands, or are you guys just like nail bonding over here and I just have to get it away? <laughs> well, so what I'd like to do is I'd like for us to taste it now. So what we're looking for in the mouth at this point, it's almost to make sure that we haven't gone too far. Uh, it smells so good. It does. Yeah, it smells good. Yeah. It smells like an orchard. Now we'd love to show you the other ones too. Yeah, I'm, I wanna see all like. Maybe we should probably just go back up. Yeah, it's just too. Alright, great. What we're going to do is we're going to taste three red wines made under my protocol from three different vineyards and two different grapes. I think it'll be an interesting comparison. We're going to start with this barrel, which is a Cabernet Franc from the Ackerley Vineyard. Everything is, is on the North Fork of Long Island, pretty close to the town of Mattatuck. like coming back to New York, checking in on your wines that have been here. That's exactly right. It's a little bit um, like a teenager's bedroom. You have to ask politely before you can go in. <laughs> what do you think of those aromatics? It smells so good. Wow. It's just so good. That's... And our aim in everything we do here is to make wines that are good enough that we can release them as single vineyard wine so that the wine has an opportunity to present the nature and tell the story of the vineyard. And it's only when we don't achieve something that we think really rises to the level of the vineyard itself in our own winemaking, it's only then that we don't release the wine as a single vineyard wine. So these two barrels represent two different wines, and as long as they're good enough, they will never be blended. Okay. There's and so much that goes into it. Yeah. It's not just the miracle of the grapes, you know, coming and being ripe and how you want them to be, then it's all this. Yeah, for me, it's just an honor to work with these vineyards, to have the opportunity to work with the fruit that these people farm under such difficult conditions. Mm -hmm. I'm really, I'm not just saying this, but you're changing the way people perceive Long Island wine. It makes me so happy because it's still Long Island. We're not messing with Long Island at all. You're not. You have come in and like you're enhancing it. Good. You and your neutral oak. <laughs> One barrel at a time. Here's my thought. I pulled out in the back here two wines that are related to the 2010 wine that we tasted as barrel samples in the barrel room. Okay. Two finished wines. And it would be impossible 
to show you anything like a representation that was more than throwing darts or pulling grains of sand off the beach. Because they make about 20 or 30 lines a year. Picked the grapes, the person who made the wine, all the stuff that happened in between here and there. You were freaking out because it rained right before you were going to pick, and then this happened and that happened. All the things that go into it, people don't stop for a minute and recognize. Thanks, Claire. And let me toast to what you said about uh, the similarity between the passages of life and the passages of wine. It's one of the reasons that it's so interesting to work in wine. On the one hand, it's about pleasure, but on the other hand, it's about time and development and time. So thanks so much. Yes.